everyone! Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Ari Lau and I'm an educational and developmental neuroscientist. Today's video is somewhat special. I'm going to be answering eight questions parents have about ADHD. So a lot of parents have approached me with questions about how to alleviate some of their kids' symptoms and how to understand their kids' behaviors a little bit better. So I want to take this opportunity to address a few questions that I often get from parents. Hopefully this helps. I included the timestamps of each question in the video description box if you want to jump to a specific topic. Now before we get started, it would mean the world to me if you can like the video and subscribe to my channel. It took me many years of school and hard work and many hours of writing and making this video so I can share my knowledge with all of you. Also, if you like and share my videos, it would help YouTube promote my content to other parents with special needs children who might also find my videos helpful. Thank you so much! Alrighty then, let's get started with the first question. How do I know if my child has ADHD? So I've actually already made a video about this question. I'll put the link to the video in the description box below. But let me give you a quick summary. ADHD has three main subtypes. ADHD inattention, ADHD hyperactivity and impulsivity, and ADHD combined. Each subtype has a different set of symptoms. For example, ADHD inattention often has what we call internalized symptoms, like not being able to pay close attention, being forgetful, or not being able to focus when someone else is talking. ADHD hyperactivity and impulsivity has more externalized symptoms, like being fidgety, not being able to stay calm and wait their turn, or being hyperactive. The third type, ADHD combined, is just like its name. Usually, kids with this subtype has a combination of both inattention and hyperactivity symptoms. But just because kids sometimes can't sit still or have trouble paying attention, it doesn't mean that they have ADHD. In order for someone to have an ADHD diagnosis, their symptoms need to be so frequent and so severe that it, they actually interfere with daily life. So that's why it's important for psychologists and clinicians to do a thorough assessment to eliminate other biological or medical factors in order to properly diagnose ADHD. I hear that ADHD medications are stimulants and have side effects. Is it safe for kids? ADHD medication can help kids focus and regain control over their impulsivity. Even though most ADHD medications are classified as stimulants, they actually often have a calming effect for kids with ADHD. That's because there's usually a chemical imbalance in the ADHD brain that causes behaviors of inattention and impulsivity. ADHD medication can help reintroduce this chemical balance in the brain and therefore help kids regain their focus and control over their actions. If you want to know how ADHD medication works and what it does to the brain, check out my video on the ADHD brain. I'll link it below. In terms of side effects, all medication, including ADHD medication, has some levels of side effects. Some kids might experience side effects like loss of appetite, difficulty sleeping, and even mood swings. But most of the time, these side effects are not too big of a concern because they can be temporary or there are other strategies to monitor these side effects. But if you think your child experiences very severe side effects after taking their ADHD medication, it's important to bring it up with their doctor so they can see if maybe they need to switch medicine or treatment methods. My kid lost a lot of weight after going on the medication. Is there anything I can do to help? So it is true that some kids lose weight after going on ADHD medication, and that's because loss of appetite is one of the side effects. And hyperactive kids also often have very fast metabolism. So if you are concerned about your child losing weight after going on meds, there are a few things you can try. Closely monitor their eating habits. It's important to make sure that your child eats a healthy, balanced diet, even if they don't feel like it. Maybe you can incorporate their favorite snacks to entice them or have them be involved in the cooking process so they can build more interest in food. I have some animated rhyming recipes that parents and kids can watch together. I'll link them below in case you're interested. Small but frequent meals. Sometimes, if the kids don't have an appetite, you can try to give them smaller meals or snacks in between meals. Usually, kids are less intimidated by a snack-sized meal rather than a full meal. Adjusting medication time. 
you can try to give your child their medication after their meals so that they wouldn't lose their appetite before a big meal. But remember to get approval from your doctor before adjusting any medication. Staying hydrated. It's important to make sure your child stays hydrated. Sometimes we can be overly anxious about how much they're eating and forget about the importance of staying hydrated. How do you diagnose ADHD? So clinicians typically use several different tests to diagnose ADHD symptoms, including interviews with parents and teachers, observation of children's behaviors at home or in the classroom, and um, different behavioral tests, such as the behavior assessment system for children, um, Connors rating scales, Vanderbilt assessment scale, et cetera, et cetera. Depending on your child's situation, some clinicians might even perform an IQ test to ensure that the kid's symptoms are not caused by cognitive delay. Does acupuncture or neurofeedback work for treating ADHD? So there are not too many studies on the effectiveness of these two methods for ADHD. Um, that's why most doctors will actually not recommend acupuncture or neurofeedback as the main treatment method. Um, let's talk about acupuncture first. I myself have never used acupuncture to treat ADHD, and I don't know too much about how acupuncture works. The research results of acupuncture on ADHD are not very clear either. Some research results indicate that there is improvement after acupuncture treatment, while other research do not find significant improvement. Also, most studies have focused on adults, so it is not clear whether acupuncture will have the same effect on younger children. Some studies have found that symptoms improved after acupuncture because of placebo effect and not necessarily the acupuncture treatment itself. The placebo effect is a psychological effect that causes people to feel that their condition has improved because they think the treatment can help them, even if the treatment itself actually has no effect. So why is it that some children's ADHD symptoms seem to have gotten better after acupuncture treatment? It could be because they were able to rest in a quiet environment for a good 20 to 30 minutes during the acupuncture procedure, or maybe acupuncture actually helped relieve any muscle tensions and therefore made them feel more relaxed. So it is possible that acupuncture may help children relax their bodies and provide a soothing mental state for them, but there is no solid evidence that actual acupuncture can treat ADHD symptoms. Okay, as for neurofeedback, for now, most neurofeedback treatments are still mostly in the experimental stage. So what exactly is neurofeedback? ADHD neurofeedback treatment can help us train our brains to be in a certain state, making us more focused. The therapist will connect the children to a neuroimaging machine, such as an EEG machine, and then show them what kind of electric signals their brains emit when they're concentrating. Then they will practice ways to strengthen this type of brain waves and practice how to stay focused. Sounds pretty sci-fi, right? So why is this treatment not very common? Well, first of all, the cost and maintenance of these neuroimaging instruments are very expensive and most clinics cannot afford to purchase or maintain these equipments. Second, extensive professional training is required to operate these equipments as well as to analyze the data. So most doctors, nurses, psychologists, and psychiatrists don't necessarily have the training to use these equipments. And finally, neuroimaging is often most effective in a controlled environment, not contaminated by outside factors. Sometimes external factors like thunder and lightning outside or the electric signals emitted by cell phones, computers, or other electronics may interfere with the neuroimaging process. Even things like hair texture can prevent us from reading brain signals because the electrodes are blocked by thick hair and therefore are not close enough to the scalp to read brain signals properly. So that's why as of now, neuroimaging treatments are not too common and might not be suitable for all kids. What can I do to help my child with ADHD? So I've talked about this topic in my previous videos, so I suggest you go back and take a look. I will put the links in the description box below. But let me give you a brief summary. There are actually many activities that you can do to help kids with ADHD. For example, you can customize a schedule with your children, which includes daily activities, rest time, play time, etc., to help them practice time management and organizational skills. In addition, you can encourage them to do more creative or active activities, such as painting, dancing, basketball, swimming, and all of these fun stuff. 
Usually kids with ADHD are very creative and active, so activities like this will help foster their creativity and interest, as well as help them manage their excess energy. Is screen time bad for kids with ADHD? How should I limit screen time? So not necessarily. Nowadays, it's very normal to use computers and phones and tablets on a daily basis. And if you don't let your children use these electric devices, it might even be counterproductive because they might not be able to do some homework or they might get teased by other kids at school. Uh, in fact, sometimes it might be better for children if you make sure that they're exposed to more beneficial content than to limit their time playing video games or watching TV. Because children with ADHD often have shorter attention spans, if they are overly exposed to fast-paced or highly stimulating content, their symptoms may become more severe. On the other hand, if you expose them to more intellectual and physical games, or games about teamwork such as games like Wii Fit, or you can watch a TV show together and then discuss the show afterwards, it might help kids with ADHD learn to focus their attention and energy on something they enjoy. If you're interested in learning more about screen time for kids, please leave a comment below. And maybe I can talk about some research on screen time in my next videos. Can ADHD be cured? Will my kids stay like this forever? For the time being, ADHD cannot be cured. But there's no need to be discouraged. In fact, 10 to 15% of children have symptoms of ADHD, but their lives are no more different from their peers when they grow up. Usually, the symptoms of ADHD are most severe when they are young, but with appropriate treatment and learning environment, most kids will develop ways to handle their symptoms, and their brains will also develop in a way that will help them with their emotional control, concentration, memory, and more. Thank you so much for watching this Q&A video. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions on ADHD. If you think my video was helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel and share it with other parents of special needs kids. It will keep me motivated to continue making this type of content for parents and teachers to use for free. If you have any other questions about ADHD or child development in general, please leave a comment and I will try my best to answer them. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.